Hey guys, what's up? I have another video and we're covering acids and bases. I realize it's a commonly misunderstood topic, so let's just dive right into it. I'm trying to make three videos and the first video is going to be super simple. We're going to be covering the very basics and we're going to work up towards like what you would see on the MCAT. And yeah, let's do it. So let's talk about the three types of acid and bases that you can have. Firstly, you have the Arrhenius acid and base. The main principle of this type of acid and base is that the acid adds hydrogen plus ions to water and the base adds OH minus ions to water. So a great example of this is hydrochloric acid, which dissociates fully to form H plus ions and chloride minus ions. A great example of an Arrhenius base is sodium hydroxide, which dissociates fully as well to form sodium plus ions and hydroxide minus ions. The second type of acid is the Bronsted-Lowry acid and base. A Bronsted-Lowry acid acts as an H plus donor and a Bronsted-Lowry base acts as an H plus acceptor. A great example of this is ammonia reacting with hydrochloric acid. The ammonia is acting as a Bronsted base because of the sealing in H plus from hydrochloric acid. And the hydrochloric acid is acting as a Bronsted-Lowry acid because it's donating a proton to the Bronsted-Lowry base, ammonia. The third and final type is the Lewis acid and base. A Lewis acid donates electron pairs and a Lewis base accepts electron pairs. An example of this is F minus reacting with BF3. The F minus acts as a Lewis base that donates electrons to the Lewis acid BF3 to finally create BF4. This type of acid is a little different from the other two because it doesn't necessarily need to have an H plus and OH minus, whereas the other two do. So let's now talk about water, specifically the ionization of water. So you probably already know water can be both an acid and base. When water isn't a beaker, it splits into its component parts of OH minus and H plus. The concentration of OH minus and H plus are going to be both 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, no matter how large or small your beaker is. So now knowing this, we can actually go ahead and find the pH of water. We can do that using the formula pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen plus concentration. So when you do that, you can plug it in and you get a pH equal to 7. And this should make sense because water is a neutral substance. So why do we just do this calculation? We did it because it's the foundation of what an equilibrium constant Ka and Kw is. The equilibrium constant for water has its own unique symbol Kw. When writing out the breaking down of water, we can find out that the Kw is the H plus multiplied by the OH minus, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. We cross out the H2O because a rule of thumb is that you do not count water in any equilibrium constant. So to quickly recap, we did all this because we want to know how to use the basic equilibrium constants, which will then help us later to talk about more complex problems like buffer solutions. So for our final point into the introduction of acid and bases, we will find out how to identify conjugate acid and base pairs. When acetic acid dissociates like in the above equation, you get acetate and H plus ions, otherwise known as hydronium ions. From this equation, we can now identify the pairs. So the acid is going to be the original acid that we added to the beaker, which is acetic acid. Its conjugate base pair is going to be the same molecule, but now with one fewer H. So therefore, it will be just acetate. Now the base is actually going to be the water that accepts an H plus from the acetic acid. So it's going to be the H2O on the left side. We know this because just like before, water can act as both an acid and base. And in this scenario, it is acting like a base. And finally, the conjugate acid pair of the water will have one more H than the original molecule and therefore be H3O+. We can now extend this further to all acids and bases when trying to identify pairs. For the next example, we now have the base and it's NH3 and its conjugate acid is going to be the same molecule but one more H, NH4+. The acid this time is going to be H2O because it is donating an H to the NH3. Just like before, water can be both an acid and base. And the conjugate base of the water is going to be the same molecule as the acid, but with one less H, so it will be OH-. So that's the basics of acid bases, and we're going to have another video probably next week. And yeah, if you need a tutoring help, hit me up on the message below or email me. And yep, see you guys.